Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today I'm bringing you an AP Physics 1 um, free response questions. We're looking at the 2016 exam, so let's get into it. All right. So a wooden wheel of mass M consists of a rim uh, with spokes rolls down a ramp that makes an angle theta with the horizontal shin above. The ramp exerts a force of static friction on the wheel so that the wheel rolls without slipping. On the diagram below, draw and label the forces, not components, that act on the wheel as it rolls down the ramp, which is indicated by the dashed line. <clears throat> to clearly indicate which point the wheel and the force is exerted, draw each force as a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the point on which the force is exerted. The lengths of the arrows need not indicate the relative magnitudes of the forces. Okay, so what's acting on this thing? Well, gravity is pretty much always here, and it always acts at the center of mass. So the center of the wheel is where gravity is, um, we'll say force of gravity, um, which equals uh, mg. And then over here, um, we have friction that's causing it to slip. Now the friction is resisting, see it's kind of turning this way, so the friction resists the direction of motion. Okay, and then um, at this point also to balance out the ramp is pushing back on. Um, we have the normal force from the ramp, and that's sort of balancing it. Otherwise, the gra this wheel would just fall through the earth um, if the ramp didn't push back on it. As the wheel rolls down the ramp, which forces cause a change in the angular velocity of the wheel with respect to the center of mass? Okay, so these are all the forces. I don't think there's any other forces. I can't think of anything else. Gravity, friction, yeah, normal force. Um, only the force of friction. Because um, the only way you can change angular velocity is through angular acceleration, which is through a torque. Okay? And torque is uh, R cross F. Now, Gravity is acting at the center. That doesn't uh, torque is what causes something to rotate, right? The torque, the 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 the, the torque has to be non-zero for it to be. Um, gravity doesn't cause something to rotate because it acts at the center of mass, so r is zero. The normal force is is perpendicular to r. Is sorry, is parallel to r. So when we do this cross product, um, it's zero. So only the force of friction is what's causing it to rotate. It is exerting a non-zero torque. And I might explain in here why the normal force doesn't exert a torque because R is parallel to F. And um, gravity doesn't exert a torque because R is zero for R cross F. Okay. <clears throat> for this ramp angle, the force of friction exerted on the wheel is less than the maximum possible static friction force. Instead, the magnitude uh, force is less than okay. Instead, the magnitude of the force of static friction is on the wheel is forty percent of the magnitude of the force component directed opposite to the force of friction. Derive an expression for the approximate linear acceleration of the wheel center of mass in terms of m theta and physical constants. Okay, so now I got to actually set up this free body diagram and solve it. So let's let's look at this. Here I have. I always want to set up a direction, right? Perpendicular to the plane is the y direction. Parallel to the plane is the x direction. I got, um, oops, not that. I have mg, but that's bro really broken into two components. If this is the ramp and the theta is here, um, in the x direction is mg, or capital mg sine theta. And the y direction is mg cosine theta. Um, and then the frictional force acts in this direction, which is equal to 0.4 times the, the maximum friction. And then the normal force here, sorry, this should be fn. Fn is equal to, yeah, that's the normal force. So in the y direction, 
So, so it's always free body diagram and I look at each direction. In the y direction, I have the normal force and I have um, a component of mg in there. So, and because it's not accelerating in the y direction, right? It's, it's only moving in the x direction. It's not coming off the ramp in any way. Uh, the net force in the y direction, so the normal force has to equal m, mg cosine theta. Okay, that's the y direction. The x direction, my net force is mg sine theta minus force of friction, which is 0.4 static friction normal force, right? Because the static friction times Fn would be the frictional force at 100%, but it's only 40%. And that equals F net in the x direction, which is equal to m times a. So um, we're solving for a in this case. So let's let's. This is still mg sine theta minus 0.4 static friction. It's less. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was just making sure I was doing this right. M actually cancels in all of this. So I can have G times sine theta. I can factor out a G minus 0.4 static friction cosine theta equals A. Now I didn't calculate any torques and my question to me is whether or not I should and Um, if I if the, the, I just want to do it one other way, if I did it through a torque a process torque approach, if I said, well, the only torque I'm having is um, force of friction times R, because it is perpendicular to the radius there, and that equals I um, alpha. Yeah, you would need to know the rotational inertia of I. Um, to figure out what, so I don't think this, this, this method would work. So I think this method is fine. Okay, and then we have more parts. In the second experiment on the ramp, a block of ice also with mass M is released from rest at the same instant the wheel is released from rest from the same height. The block slides on the ramp with negligible friction. Which object of either reaches the bottom of the ramp with the greatest speed? The block. And the reason the block does is because they both start, this is an energy conversion. You have to assume that um, in both cases, uh, there's no energy loss due to friction, right? There's a small amount of friction here that's causing, but it's not really, there's no energy loss for the most part. Now, they start at the same height, which means they, they start with the same potential energy. But by the bottom, all of that potential energy here, MGH, has been converted into rotational energy plus kinetic energy. So this has one half I omega squared plus one half MV squared. And this has one half MV squared. So it took some energy to get this thing to start rotating. And so um, because some energy is used up in the rotation of this, um, we end up with um, less kinetic energy because some of the potential energy had to go into causing it to rotate. But wheel requires rotational energy. Leaving less kinetic energy. compared to the block. So in other words, the, the way you think of it is the block will have more kinetic energy because the block will have all of its potential energy converted to kinetic, whereas for the wheel, only some of it will be converted to kinetic energy. And that implies V is larger for the block because it has a larger kinetic energy. 
okay um, I forgot to pull up the 2016 AP physics one solutions so let's look at them <clears throat> Okay, we got the normal force acting here. We got gravity acting here and the force of friction acting there. Good. Friction force. Um, friction force is the only force that exerts a torque. For indicating the frictional force is 0.4 mg sine theta. <clears throat> Let me see. I messed that up because I put 4.4. 4. <clears throat> oh, I misread it. I said it's 40% of the magnitude of the force or force component directed opposite of the force of friction. What's directed opposite of the force of friction is 0.4 mg sine theta. I just mis I didn't. I, I, I don't know why I read that too fast. So I got this part wrong. Block. Um, yeah, the explanation is fine for that one. OK, so other than misreading this one, I, I did this part right. I just. I misread what they meant by the 40%, so that was a little weird. It was worded a little strange, and, and, and it's just not, I'm just not used to like it being framed that way, so that's, um, oh, and this one, I didn't, I, man, man, I, I messed up this one pretty bad. I explained the energy. I want to explain this in terms of forces. Um, in terms of forces, um, what's the reasoning? Um, the frictional force. on the wheel slows slows it down on forces the reason this one goes slower is because there's friction fighting it the whole way and on this one there's no friction fighting it so sorry i misread it i didn't let's see if i got that part right uh correct answer is block the wheel experiences a counteracting frictional force so the block is the greater net force yeah yeah, yeah. that's fine it's because the, there's friction in that one so Okay, so kind of messed up that one pretty bad by not reading the questions correctly, but I hope at least um, you guys learned something out of that. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe, and I will uh, see you in the second free response question. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I just want to let you know that I offer free homework help on Twitch or Discord. So uh, just stop on by if you have any homework questions or you just want to learn about different parts of math and physics and hang out. Hope to see you there.